grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So when you pray, the hymn writer says, Thou art coming to a king. Large petitions with thee bring. Can you, can you ask for anything too big? Not according to this hymn writer, who I got to believe was inspired by perhaps this text. Can you ask too often? I hear some of you say, I, I'm not going to bother the Lord. He's so tired of hearing from me. The Bible begs to differ. The knocking neighbor didn't think it was wrong. He not only came at a bad time, he stayed there. He was a pest. You ever had a pest in your life? You just want them to go away? For his grace and power are such, none can ever ask too much or too often. What do you want in life? What, what brings you anxiety? Every Sunday morning, I'm anxious. Pastors are anxious. We have so much on our minds. To, to we're thinking about the sermon. How is attendance going to be? Um, will the liturgy go well? Stuff like that. We're anxious about that. That's why my hands are always cold. My hands are always cold. You thought it's because I had no heart. No, <laughs> it's because I'm anxious. I'm anxious. And God says, when, when you're anxious, Gary. Go to the Lord. Be a knocking neighbor. Now, you're not anxious about conducting a worship service, but you have a job, too. And there's a stack of work this high waiting for you tomorrow. And Mondays are your hardest day because you don't even want to be there. Okay? And you might not be feeling well. So you're anxious. Are you going to be a knocking neighbor? Martha was that way. By the way, that was the, that's the story right before this story about the teaching of prayer, the story of Mary and Martha. And one scholar pointed out that the tone is it, are opposite of each other. The story about prayer is a story of comfort and how to solve, how, where to go for your anxiety. And the story of Mary and Martha is about Martha, who's a lot like us. She was anxious and troubled about many things. What are you anxious and troubled about? Hmm? Your health? The church. We're in transition. This is the day of transition. How's it going to go? Will he like us? Will you like them? <laughs> Jury's out. <laughs> Will you like him? Are you anxious about America? It's a political year, have you noticed? Are you anxious about America? Do you feel like we have any problems? Let me answer that question, yes. Shootings all the time. I'm anxious about America. I'm troubled about that. Are you anxious about the global scene? Does it feel like the world is coming apart at the seams? Do you think about that? Do you worry for maybe not so much yourself, but your children, your grandchildren, that this is the world they're going to live in? Are you anxious about spiritual things? Does it bother you that your sins, the consequence of your sins, whatever they may be, I may never know, I will never know, you won't know mine, but you know yourself where you disappoint God is enough to keep you out of heaven? Does that bother you? You won't tell anybody because it's such a personal thing. Are you a knocking neighbor about that? The text here in Luke chapter 11 is a story of the disciples of Jesus. I didn't know this as a disciple came to Jesus, but my hunch is he represented the whole group. And they saw Jesus praying, and they knew John the Baptist had taught his disciples to pray, so they didn't want to be left out. And they asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. Okay. And my hunch is they were thinking about like, like uh, technique, technique. Like do we stand straight? Do we fold our hands this way? Do we do them this way? Do we fold our hands at all? Do we have to close our eyes? Hmm? Should the prayers be canned prayers or can we make up our own? Do we kneel or not kneel? About technique. 
And Jesus said, it's not about technique. He taught them the prayer, and the first cue is that it's, it's, it's about a relationship. He says, when you pray, say, our Father. Father? You mean God is our Father? Yes, he is. God is our Father. And by virtue of Timmy's baptism and, excuse me, Timmy's baptism and your baptism, you are his child. God wants you as his child in his family, not as an outsider. That's why he sent Jesus. That's the benefit of sending his son Jesus because Jesus took away the barrier of being in the family. And when Jesus died on the cross and you reap the benefits of his death on the cross when you were baptized, isn't that what Romans 6 says? Do you not know that those of you who were baptized were baptized into his death? And even as he was buried, you too shall rise to newness of life. You become part of his, the adoption is complete through your baptism and your baptismal faith, which you are here today to refresh in the preaching, in the renewal of our baptismal vows, and of course, in the Lord's Supper. And now you are a child. So how do you, how, how do you, uh, you don't have your driver's license yet, right? It's close. Are you going to get it? No, you don't know? <laughs> Do you want to drive? Do you have your own car? Okay, let's say, Ethan, you get your driver's license in a year, right? You pass it, all that, you get your driver's license. You don't have a car. What are you going to do to drive? You're going to borrow a car. You're not going to borrow my car. <laughs> Who are you going to go to to get some wheels? Dad? Let me tell you a secret. Go to mom first. <laughs> and mom will go to dad. So you're really going to dad, but you're going to mom. That's what we did, my brother and I. You're going to go to dad because he's your father. And he's going to give you good things. And if he thinks you're, you're skilled enough, mature enough to drive the car, he'll loan you the car. He'll probably put some restrictions on it. But he'll loan you the car because he's your father. Right? That's the point of the teaching about prayer, prayer. The passage today is not so much about technique as about the Lord's Prayer. You know plenty about the Lord's Prayer, but about relationship. Relationship. And he gave the parable about a relationship. A man had two friends. One was his next door neighbor. The other came in to visit him. And he wanted to feed his journeying friend something to eat, but he didn't have anything. So he went to his friend. He was like, you go to your dad, and we go to our father. But the real point is not that his friend was so kind. He, you know, he was kind of like, I really don't want to get out of bed. But it was about the knocking and the persistence. And I'm going to wrap this up really fast because I can almost say it a sentence. It's the knocking and the tenacity and the outrageous courage that the, f that the needy friend had. The outrageous, shameless courage of knocking on the door over and over again. <laughs> Lord, I'm sick. I want to... Lord, I'm worried about my sins and <laughs> Lord, I need a job. <laughs> Lord, I want, I'm praying for my beloved unite. <laughs> you pray, but knock over and over again because he's your father. And he will never disown you. Amen. The peace of God. Wait, wait. Are you getting it? 
And the pe- you got it? You sure? Okay. Which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.